Leave it to the WWE to screw something up. And here's what I mean. When they brought back Brock Lesnar in 2012, we all know how badly they dropped the ball. I mean, people were happy to see Brock Lesnar. They wanted to cheer Brock Lesnar. So, of course, instantly they tried to get you to boo Brock Lesnar by sending him up against John Cena, which anything was going to make you like Brock Lesnar even more. You're happy that he returned, and now you feel like he's got a chance to actually beat the unbeatable monster that is the John Cena monster. So then they go to Extreme Rules 2012, and of course, Brock Lesnar dominates like 98% of the match, only for Cena to reign and rule supreme, and people are like, oh, what the fuck is the point? And then, yes, he beats Triple H at SummerSlam, but then he loses to him at WrestleMania. And, you know, frankly, the first two years of Brock Lesnar's run in WWE wasn't very good. It frankly sucked. You can take your Paul Heyman was with him, so that makes it awesome, and blow it out your fucking ass. The stories weren't very good, and they weren't featuring him in a way that he should have been featured. And bringing him immediately in, coming off of his MMA credentials and all this other history... And you're instantly having him lose to John Cena is just fucking stupid. So, on the one hand, I shouldn't be that surprised that they had him end the streak at WrestleMania 30 because they had to do something to right the previous wrongs. They had to do something for comp to compensate for all the fucking stupidity they had previously demonstrated in the Brock Lesnar booking over the previous two years. I mean, for God's sakes, he lost his first match back against John Cena, then his first WrestleMania back, he loses to God. Praise God! It's just ridiculous. So you had to figure at some point that they were going to do something big. You would think they would do something to correct, and they did correct. But now you've gotten to the point where you had them end the streak at WrestleMania 30, and you were hoping in part that was to do a couple things. Right some previous wrongs with what they had done with Brock Lesnar, but also to continue on that investment that you put in the two and a half decades or so of trying to maintain the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania. You were going to get, hopefully, some type of return on investment and use that as a catalyst to do big things with Brock Lesnar, but do things also with some of your other young guns, your future faces of the franchise, the guys that were going to be the consistent day-in and day-out players for years to come. But instead of the WWE really doing that, They've overcompensated to the nth degree. They've made Brock Lesnar into too much of a beast and too much of a monster. This guy goes from Extreme Rules 2012 where he dominates the match but Cena still wins to not. Not only does he beat Taker in a horrible glorified squash match at WrestleMania 30, come SummerSlam he's destroying John Cena. So of course now the WWE has decided, hey, we tried to fight the great and make you hate him. Now we're going to give you a reason to make him the number one babyface because we're fucking stupid. We don't know what the hell we're doing. And they don't. So they did. But now you get to the point in time, over the past two years, the only time Brock Lesnar has lost is one time at SummerSlam under questionable circumstances to The Undertaker. Nobody can beat this dude. John Cena had multiple cracks. He couldn't get the job done. Seth Rollins got his crack. He couldn't get the job done. Roman Reigns had his crack. He couldn't get the job done. At the end of the day, Taker kind of got the job done, but ultimately didn't get the fucking job done. So now we come here to WrestleMania 32 at this moment in time, two years after the ending of the streak at WrestleMania 32, and I think there have been some unintended negative consequences, and that is the WWE has taken one monster in John Cena that isn't currently there, and replaced him with an even more problematic monster in Brock Lesnar, who is. And they've taken a guy from being a special attraction to having him gone for months at a time to where he's no attraction, to where now when they bring him back, frankly, in my opinion, he's kind of the wrong attraction. And here's what I mean. When you look at the roster right now and the way they have booked Brock Lesnar, they have crossed a threshold of just booking him strongly to, to booking him to the point where if anybody beat him, you wouldn't believe it. It would go over like a fart in church. It wouldn't work. And it wouldn't make sense. And it would be in a situation where you booked Brock Lesnar in such a way, potentially, where it's harmful for him to lose, and it doesn't really help the other person that fucking beats him. So what the hell is the whole point? And at the end of the day, when it comes to Brock Lesnar and the way he's been utilized over the past two years, by and large part, what has been the point? He arrives every couple of weeks. Heyman says the same fucking thing. Brock Lesnar will smash some things, smash some people. Then he walks out. Then he wins the matches. Come back in a couple of months. I mean, for as frustrated as so many fans are about the repetitive nature of the product today, as they should be, because it is that bad, to me, that whole eat, sleep, conquer, repeat crap that Lester was saying, I emphasize that repeat word. 
Because now he's becoming like everybody else in the way that everything he does is the fucking same. But now he's doing it in such a way where they have replaced the John Cena monster with the Brock Lesnar monster. So now we get to this point in time in WrestleMania 32. It's been two years since the streak has ended. I don't think the company, obviously, and not surprisingly, has done a whole lot with that. Yes, they built up Brock Lesnar, but what is that really giving the company? It's not giving them a lot. All the while, you've got this roster of younger guys that are looking for something to put them over the edge, to get them to that next level, to make them stars of the future and the now, and they desperately need something. you got... Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose, WrestleMania 32. In my opinion, Brock Lesnar should lose to Dean Ambrose at that show. And I was surprised when I first floated this out there that so many people were opposed to this. I don't understand how so many of the hardcore fans, and I still don't, and no matter how many bullshit reasons or excuses or laundry list of things I'm given, I can't understand it. For so many of you that claim you don't like the muscle heads or sit there and say that I like the muscle heads, you're the ones marking off for Brock Lesnar, not fucking me. For so many of you that seem to claim that you love work rate, even though you just love glorified fucking spot fest, why the fuck would you love a slow meandering Brock Lesnar? If anything, I should be the one that likes him. Oh yeah, he does two moves. Ugga, ugga, suplex city, bitch. He do Scott Steiner proud. I don't get it. And I don't get why so many people are still so excited because everything that Brock Lesnar does now is the same fucking thing he's been doing the past couple of years. There is nothing different. There is nothing that's spicing it up. There is nothing that makes this guy look vulnerable in any way. And again, like I said, it has taken him from being a special attraction, no new attraction when he's gone to when he is back. He is becoming the wrong type of attraction. And at some point in time, you have to sit there and say, if a Dean Ambrose can't beat him in a street fight, then what the fuck is the point of anybody facing off against this dude? And it's a fair and legitimate question. I look at this from a who benefits standpoint. If Brock Lesnar beats Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania 32, what does that do? It most certainly isn't going to help Dean Ambrose. Now, you'll get the, the narky nerds that'll sit there and say, No, oh, just because he was in a match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, and this was awesome, and they did extreme shit that's going to make it awesome, and that's ultimately going to help Dean Ambrose tremendously. No, it's not. At some point in time, and this is the way it's worked for so many years, and some of you will say, well, it doesn't work that way anymore. Well, maybe that's part of the fucking problem. Is at some point in time, when you're trying to build guys up, you have to give them victories at marquee signature vic pay-per-views against increasingly significant levels of opponents. It's how they built up Austin. It's how they built up the fucking Rock. It's how they built the Warrior back in the day. You have to do this shit. And yet, for some reason now, because that's the way they did in the past, they shouldn't do it anymore. If anything, they should stick to those fundamentals more than fucking ever. And you've got a Dean Ambrose that's kind of floating off in the breeze. People want to get behind him all the way, but he's not being put in a position where you can truly get behind him all the way. And no, just cheering for him because you don't like fucking Roman Reigns isn't good enough. That means that you just pretend to hate Roman Reigns. It doesn't mean that Dean Ambrose is actually fucking over. I'm just stunned that more people aren't advocating for Ambrose to go over Lesnar here because you know goddamn good and well that if it was a goddamn Daniel Bryan, you'd be advocating for it. And you can sit there and say, well, when CM Punk did it, we didn't bitch that much. Ah, shut the fuck up. The fact of the matter is, is if Brock Lesnar beats Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania 32, it really doesn't benefit the Brock Lesnar character. And frankly, it really doesn't benefit the Dean Ambrose character. So why would I pick the decision and the booking result that in theory is a lose-lose situation and benefits no fucking body? That is stupid and that is ridiculous. Where do you go with Dean Ambrose after he loses to Lesnar at fucking WrestleMania? Are you going to do a return match between the two? What the fuck's the point? You've already went to a street fight and you already lost to Lesnar, so why the hell would you do it again? You want Ambrose to face off for the fucking title? He couldn't beat Lesnar on the biggest stage at WrestleMania, so why the fuck does he deserve a title shot? No, the best thing for business, and I'm not even the hugest Ambrose guy, I'm not an Ambrose advocate, but I will advocate for him in this case. The best decision that benefits all parties involved, the best outcome possible is to have Ambrose beat Lesnar at WrestleMania 32 for several reasons. Number one, it's a fucking street fight. So if you insist on protecting Brock Lesnar, at least if he's going to lose, it could be in this type of situation where Ambrose could do any fucking thing possible. 
So he had to go to all these lengths. He had to do all this bullshit in order to beat Brock Lesnar. If he sits there and hits him with flaming, flaming bats of ass tacks repeatedly and hits him with the shards of glass anus 540, are you really going to hold that against Brock Lesnar? Is that really going to make him look weak? Is that really going to make him look any worse? If Ambrose had to throw him through fire and tar and brimstone and everything else, no, it just, if anything, helps accentuate the fact that this guy is supposed to be living on the lunatic fringe and he's supposed to be fucking crazy and he'll do whatever it takes to win. He'll do whatever is called for, no matter what the consequences are. That would seem to fit perfectly with the Dean Ambrose character in this type of match. And now you've got the easy out where it takes an incredibly a, lot, a large amount of bullshit for Brock Lesnar to lose, but he still doesn't look weak. Now, at the same point in time, you've created just enough vulnerability with Brock Lesnar where, yeah, it took all this bullshit for Ambrose to beat him, but Ambrose still beat him. So now, the next time he faces off with somebody like a Roman Reigns or a Bray Wyatt or whoever the fuck else you're going to throw at Lesnar in the next couple of years, it leaves at least a little bit of a seed of a doubt that you don't know who's going over. You don't know what's going to happen. It takes away some of the predictability that Lester beating Ambrose and dispensing of this asshat so that way you can move on to the next fucking one off ultimately does. Furthermore, when you look at this from Ambrose's standpoint, Ambrose is close and he's on the cusp. He's getting over more now because people want to hate on Roman Reigns and he actually is for himself. They need things for Ambrose to actually get over Ambrose, not associated with Roman Reigns directly or indirectly or whatever the fuck. A signature victory at the biggest show of the year in front of over 100,000 people is going to do worlds of good for Dean Ambrose's character. Furthermore, now that you've had him beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, you actually have an excuse for a fucking return match. Because Ambrose losing to Lesnar, there's no fucking reason for a return match here. Lesnar losing to Ambrose, now he's pissed. You can go on the next month in Extreme Rules and give Lesnar the victory right fucking back. It's a lame-ass justification you guys have given me over the years for so many stupid fucking booking decisions. John Cena, Bray Wyatt being one of them fuckers. But now if I throw that out there as a possibility, you're going to shit all over it. No, if anything, it makes all the fucking sense of the world. Why do just one big money match between these two asshats when I could do multiple ones? That, to me, is part of the point of booking in professional wrestling, is to create the opportunity for return matches to where the second match might make even more money than the first match. Having Lesnar beat Ambrose the first time eliminates the need or purpose for that whatsoever. Having Ambrose beat Lesnar creates a need and creates an opportunity for that. And it's a glorious thing. And now when you're looking at Ambrose and trying to project and look ahead as Lesnar shortly after WrestleMania will take a few months off until you get to SummerSlam season, what the hell are you going to do with Ambrose? Now all of a sudden, he's gone on and he's beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. That's something to hang his hat on. He came that close to beating God at Roblox. He came that close to getting the number one contendership uh, at Fastlane for WrestleMania. Now you can really build up the heat and animosity between him and Frickin' Roman Reigns. Or if you want to go in a different direction, you want to send him at frickin' Triple H come SummerSlam. Imagine how much better that will work if he has a signature victory like he does against Brock Lesnar. Part of the problem with Dean Ambrose and part of the reason why he doesn't get all the way over by himself is just when it seems like the WWE is about to sprinkle it in and about to give it to you, they dip tease you and pull it away. He never fully goes over. He didn't fully go over Bray Wyatt. He didn't fully go over Seth Rollins. At some point in time, the dude's got to fully and completely go over somebody. This is the opportunity. This is the moment. To me, this is clear as day to fucking see. Brock Lesnar needs to lose at WrestleMania 32. He needs to. Because you get to that point, if he doesn't lose there, then when is he ever going to fucking lose? And to sit there and say, well, they're building him up for Roman Reigns, and then, oh yeah, well, Roman Reigns came along and squashed him, y'all be pissed all the fucking hell. To me, I would think the craziness here is people aren't getting behind Dean Ambrose beating Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32. You know, there are times where I look at Dean Ambrose and I want to say, wash your ass, dude. But in all seriousness, it is what it is. Frankly, he's one of the best that we've got at the moment on the main roster. I'd like to actually see him be given a full opportunity to run with the ball. I'd like to see what they could do with him. Having him lose to Brock Lesnar is just more of the same. It's more of the mistakes of the past couple of years. Why do the same things time after time after time and expect the results to be any different? The best outcome in terms of storylines, in terms of character development for all parties involved, is Dean Ambrose must... 
beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, period. 